Here is one last example of putting all this stuff together. So the function we're dealing with is right here. Um, so the first thing I want to do is find the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are where the top equals zero. Now you might notice, you will notice, the top doesn't factor. So to do this, you'd have to use the A to figure out where this equals zero. You're going to have to use the quadratic formula. Um, I'm using a lot of wolf line alpha on this uh, because it's, it makes my life a little bit easier. So what I did, since I'm going to have to graph this function anyhow, I went to wolf line alpha and I just asked to solve the top. And you can see the results. When I asked to solve the top, I got these imaginary numbers, which means there is no real solution. So there is no x-intercept. You would have found that with the quadratic formula. Um, but why bother when we have Wolfram Alpha there? So I'm going to say none to that. That's important. Because we know now it does not go through the x axis. The y intercepts you plug in 0 for x. So basically, all the x's drop out, and I'm left with negative 7 over 3. Vertical asymptotes, those are easy. That's where the bottom equals zero. And that's obviously negative three. Horizontal asymptotes, well, the top degree is two, the bottom degree is one. Since the top degree is bigger than the bottom degree, there are no horizontal asymptotes. You may remember there is a slant. It's one bigger, but we're not going to deal with those right now. So we'll say no to the horizontal asymptotes. Simplified first derivative and simplified second derivative. That's all from Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha. Um, what I noticed, if you look at my first derivative, it looks like that factors, and you know it does. It's a pretty easy factor, but since I had it on Wolfram Alpha anyhow, I scrolled down to see alternate forms, and it did give me the factored form. That's the form I like to work with. That will help me determining my charts if, if my quantities are positive or negative. Simplified second derivative, if... Uh, as usual, if you do the second derivative on Wolfram Alpha, the first answer they give you is always not simplified. So you have to scroll down to find this answer, which is very easy to work with. So now I have my derivatives. I can find my critical numbers from the first derivative. Now, since it's factored, my critical numbers are where the derivative equals zero, which is where the top equals zero. and it's easy with the factoring to, sh to see that the top is 0, x equals negative 1, and x equals negative 5. The bottom equals 0 at negative 3, but we already know that's a vertical asymptote, so it's not a critical number. Now remember here, critical numbers are where the only places that mins and maxes can occur. So keep that in mind when we go to mins and maxes. If we do have them, it can only be it can only be x equals negative one and x equals negative five and their y coordinates. The possible points of inflection are where the second derivative equals zero. So the bottom equals zero and negative three, so we don't have to worry about that. Again, that's a vertical asymptote. The top is eight. So you have to set the top equal to zero, which makes no sense because you'd say a equals zero, which it doesn't. So that just means there's no possible points of inflection, which obviously, see right next to it, the points of inflection? Well, I'm gonna write none right now. If there's no possible points of inflection, I don't think we're gonna find any points of inflection. 
All right, so now it's time to make our first derivative chart. Our first derivative chart is going to include all of the critical numbers and the vertical asymptotes. So let me move some stuff over a little bit to give us some space. Oh. So our chart, we have critical numbers at negative one and negative five and a vertical asymptote at negative three. So, sorry about that, I want to move this over. All right, so this is my first derivative chart, and here is my first derivative. So, in this area, I'm going to test the derivative at negative 10. If you look at my first derivative right here, I will get a negative and then negative times a negative over x plus 3 squared is always positive no matter what. So I have a negative times a negative times a negative, which is negative over a positive, which is negative. Um, here I'm going to check negative 4. I have that negative times a negative times a positive over a positive, which is a positive over a positive. Here I'm going to check negative 2. I have a, this automatic negative right here times a negative times a positive over a positive. Same thing as the interval before it. And finally, here, f prime of 0, negative times a positive times a positive, which is negative, over a positive, which is negative. So I'm ready to answer the questions about increasing and decreasing. It's increasing. On the intervals negative 5 to 3 and negative 3 to 1. And it's decreasing on the outside intervals negative infinity to negative 5. And negative 1 to infinity. That should be a negative one there. Okay. The minimum. Well, here it goes from negative to positive. So we have a minimum at negative five, comma, whatever the y value is. Maximum, it goes from positive to negative here, which is a maximum at negative one. Nothing can happen at the vertical asymptotes. You can't, oh, I can't, shouldn't say that. The vertical asymptote cannot be a minimum or maximum because it's not a point. So you plug those into the original function to, to get the y value. I'm not, I'm not going to waste your time with that. You can do it in your calculator. Uh, but do plug them into the original function to get your y value because they are points. Um, so now we have to do the second derivative. Um, so let me clear everything. Uh, for concavity, we're going to have to do the second derivative. And remember, we had no possible points of inflection, but every, anything can happen in a vertical asymptote. So the, our vertical asymptote was at x equals negative 3. So here's my second derivative 
chart. And here was my second derivative. So this is going to be very simple. The second derivative at negative 10 is negative over negative 10 plus 3 is negative. Negative cubed is negative. So negative over negative, which is positive. And the second derivative at 0 is negative 8 over a positive, which is negative. So that means we're concave up from negative infinity to negative 3, or concave down on negative 3 to infinity. And there are no points of inflection. We already talked about that. That's all the information we need. Um, because I had it already plugged into Wolfram Alpha, I also hit uh, graph or plot. It likes the word plot better, but it won't translate. The original graph. And it gave me this. So this is what I'm going to do to check all of my work. According to this graph, I should have had an asymptote at x equals negative 3. You can see there is no horizontal asymptote because these ends are not approaching any number. We have a maximum around here, minimum around here. I believe that's what we came up with. Um, negative 1 and negative 5. So negative 1, actually, it's a little bit over here, and negative 5. Um, so it looks pretty good. Concave, decreasing, increasing, increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down. So that's a lot to absorb. Um, so if you need to, just watch again, watch the old examples, practice. And if you have any questions, as always, please let me know.